Greetings ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this war painting tutorial, a Tautastic tutorial this time, the KV-128-2 Storm Ravana Battle Suit. And as we normally do, we always prime our miniatures before we uh, start painting. The important thing, especially with this Elk Club paint, is that you, uh, as you could see, there was some residue in the bottom that we are going to mix up. So I'm just going to go about do that. And if you don't know or if you're unsure how to clean up and how to remove um, excess uh, plastic and mold lines, then uh, feel free to check out my other videos. Just go to my YouTube channel and you will find lots of tips and uh, techniques on how to remove those. After you've figured out or after you're done with um, prepping the primer, just add it to your uh, airbrush and um, secure all the pieces that you're going to prime on fixtures like this uh, crocodile um, clip I believe it's called. Or if you want to use uh, poster tech or uh, tape or whatever you fancy, just um, go about doing that. Building up our primer, we're going to do it in uh, just a thin layer to start with and then build up our layers according to that with thin to medium coats. I have a few tips for you guys when using primers. The first one, is, uh, the first one is to make sure that your paints are uh, mixed properly. This can be uh, noticeable by looking at the bottom of the bottle or by using your drop tool to make sure that it has the right consistency and the right color. The next thing that you want to be looking out for is that there's a couple of paints that has really nasty fumes. So make sure that you protect yourself and the ones around you from these fumes so that we don't cause any health issues when handling uh, these paints. Also when you're priming you want to be starting off with a thin layer and then building it up from there with thin to medium layers so that you don't obstruct any detail. And as well as when the primer is fully dry I would recommend that you gently brush off any potential dust or any loose residue from the surface before you continue painting. That's all the tips I had for priming, let's move on to the next part when we're going to be doing the base coats and the layers. Starting off our color scheme, we're going to be using uh, German Dark Yellow as our uh, primary base coat. The end color of this color scheme is going to be uh, reasonably, reasonably white, I would say with uh, of course some weathering on top of it. As we always do and as I always do I thin my paints in a rough one-to-one -one mix and make sure that your paint is properly mixed in your airbrush and test so that you have a nice coverage before you start painting. Securing your uh, pieces is uh, really up to you what you fancy and once you start priming this, we're not going to stop until we have primed all our parts for this model. It took me about, I would say, like one and a half coats, starting with a dust coat and then finishing off with the final coat. The second color that we're going to use is dark yellow. And what we're going to do now is start building from our shades all the way up to our highlights. So that dark yellow is gonna be the most re recessed one, I would say. As you can see, it's not very different from our primary coat, and that is why it's uh, not very noticeable now. The next color is gonna be mostly the covering um, color, sand yellow. And it's not really much to it more than uh, going about more of the uh, uh, edged uh, pieces of um, the eye, like the, the part. And from here we're just going to focus more and more on the um, more uh, 
I would say like highlighted pieces of the um, the like the part. And going to we're almost at our highlights now. Going with sand and then doing a final highlight of pure white. So there you go. That's our uh, base coat for the white. And for our accent pieces, we're gonna be going with a base coat of uh, U.S. Oil Olive Drab. Next up will be uh, the interior green to build up some highlights, and then finishing off with a camouflage gray green. Same principle goes here. Uh, you're gonna start with your darkest color and build up to your highlights. I masked off the pieces here so that I get nice and clean lines. If you're not 100% comfortable with using an airbrush, I would suggest that you first try out different bar pressures and different consistencies of paint until you find the most suitable combination of the two when you're actually going to apply paint to your model. As well as if you're going to apply as many layers as we've done now, I would keep my paints very thin. I've used a one-to-one -one mix in the, this tutorial and I've used a bar pressure of around two bars. So if you're happy with your layers and your base coats, we're going to continue with the metal parts and the metal accents. To start off our base coat for our uh, metal parts, we're going to be using um, Vallejo uh, Game Air and uh, Gunmetal in the 4 to one mix. Just be sure to have a nice tip on your brush and start laying your base. And if you're um, a bit shaky on your hand as I am, then you can uh, put the part down on the table and it's a lot easier to work with. So there you go, the base coat of the metal parts finished. Next up we're going to build up our gold parts, starting off with a bronze or a really dark gold and uh, highlighting it with uh, Citadel's uh, Sikorax bronze. And the goal here is just to give it a light highlight, not go all the way because we're going to come back to this later. As you can see the, um, the difference between the colors is really subtle. Next up we're going to use camouflage grey brown to start doing our chipping effect. Using a sponge I'm going to go um, making some chipping effect on the most raised edges of the model. Uh, it depends on how heavy you want to go with your weathering. In terms of chipping I'm going to try to keep it fairly modest because it's a lot easier to go a bit lighter with the chipping effect and then go back to doing more later if you want to than it is to go backwards. Next up we're going to do an oil wash with uh, Winston Newton's Von Dyke Brown mixed with uh, some white spirit and here you have to make a choice on how heavy you want to go with the weathering. Uh, I decided to go fairly heavy with this oil wash so that we can get some nice tint all the way uh, around the model. And as you can see it looks fairly thin now but when it dries it's gonna look a lot darker. In fact um, if you want to go even darker than this and I would suggest that you would use a darker base color to start with. When you're working with oil washes, you want to keep in mind that the more pigment you put into the white spirit, the more heavy the weathering effect is going to be. So if you're only looking for a clean looking model, then I would suggest that you keep your pigment wash fairly thin with not too much pigment in it and then only apply it to the recessed panels and recessed areas of the model. And then once it's finished, you can just gently wipe away the excess with some white spirit on a Q-tip. 
Also when you're working with uh, oil washes and white spirit, I would suggest that you keep in mind the health aspect of, um, of these products so that we don't damage our health or anyone else's health. Alright, so when you're finished with your oil washes and happy with how it looks, it's time to move on to the lenses and other details of the model. Before we go into smaller details, we're going to do a quick uh, dry brush of our metal parts. And what I did is I used a lead badger and I've um, just gently going to dry brush all the raised surfaces of the metal parts, but also go on the most prominent edges of our base colors so that we can get a little bit more chipping effect going on on the model in general as well. I'm just going to about really really soft with this dry brush. I'm not going heavy at all just to get uh, that small small um, as you can see it's really really small just going on the highest and most prominent edges as you can see on the edge there. So we're gonna go and paint our lenses now and there's a general idea when you paint lenses. You have a base coat and now I'm gonna wet, uh, wet blend my middle tone into the bottom right corner of the lens mixing in some lighter blue as I go along going more towards the bottom right and lastly we're gonna do a uh, extreme highlight of white just in the bottom right and as well in the top left corner to get that uh, shine like the make the illusion of shine so there you go that's how I paint my lenses and if you want to change the color of the lens then just switch out the color painting lenses can be quite a tricky thing to achieve especially if you're new to the hobby try to keep in mind to have a base coat a middle tone first highlight and then finally an extreme highlight at the end by following those steps you will surely with some practice achieve the same effects that I have now. So if you're happy with your lenses and your buttons, let's continue with the weathering. To make uh, the most prominent edges of this model stand out even more, I'm going to add just a little bit of black inside some of the uh, chipping that we did previously. And this makes the illusion of this... Uh, damage or the scratching being a lot deeper than it actually is. And if you want to make uh, scratches along the top of the armor, all you need to do is water down some black and make a straight line like that, just going down the, uh, the armor. And also to make it stand out and make the, the scratch a little bit more 3D effect, we're going to put some white just right beside it. And when you do this, you need to keep in mind in what direction the light is coming from, so that you get the right angle of the highlights. Next up, we're going to make some glow effects on our weapons. Starting off with a really, really dark blue as our base. This is also, also going to be standing out in terms of the, uh, the glow and make that, uh, uh, the actual effect of the glow more, more prominent. And as I move along, I go even lighter with the blue. So we're going to go from a really, really dark blue to a pretty much pure white. I believe the last color I used was a one-to-one -one mix of sky blue and white. And that's the last highlight I'm doing there. And the last thing that we're going to do is add some shade. Just some carbocrism around the edges to make 
that purple add into our glow effect. When you get to the stage that you're happy with your glow effects, all you need to do is uh, your final assembly and basing according to the rest of your army. I did my basing in uh, desert theme. I figured, figured it would go well with this uh, suburban slash desert camo that I was going with. Hopefully you liked this tutorial and feel free to comment below about what you thought about this conversion as well as my um, paint job and my tutorial. I will try to read as much feedback and answer as much questions as I possibly can. Until next time guys, take care and happy converting.